रजिस्ट नाउ हेलो डियर चिल्ड्रन नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू येट अनादर सेशन ऑफ अ ब्रांड न्यू सीरीज बायो बाइट्स इन 15 मिनट्स वेयर एंड वी इंटेंड टू सिंपलीफाई सम ऑफ योर सीमिंगली कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्सेप्ट्स एंड ट्राई एंड कवर देम विद इन 15 मिनट्स ओके एंड दिस इज अंबिका योर बायोलॉजी मास्टर टीचर राइट हियर ऑन दिस अमेजिंग प्लेटफार्म ऑफ वेदांतु ओके गाइस सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू बी डिस्कसिंग येट अनादर लाइफ प्रोसेस व्हिच इज पार्ट ऑफ the cbse class 10 chapter life processes children let me remind you this series is especially intended for those of you who are looking for something very quick okay the detailed videos the detailed explanation of everything in your syllabus related to this topic you can find them on the cbse playlist uh, on the channel okay so check out the respective playlist and watch them if you want a well detailed explanation okay this is a quick revision basically okay so Let's get started with the positive quote. Remember that your only limit is your mind. So imagine no limits at all to what you can achieve, and definitely you will reach great heights one day. Pakka. Okay. Now, let us start with talking about the need for a circulatory system in an organism. Now, a circulatory system is required for the transport of various substances in the body. Be it a plant or an animal or any other organism, transport of nutrients or food. water gases hormones all of this is very important when i say gases it's mainly oxygen and carbon dioxide especially the respiratory gases okay so regardless of whichever organism we are talking about uh, a well developed transport system is very very important so let us start with talking about circulation in animals rather human beings okay so components of the human circulatory system are majorly three of them blood blood vessels and the heart together they form our wonderful circulatory system okay now starting with the blood what is blood blood is a fluid connective tissue tissue remember that okay so um, it has both a liquid component and a solid component in it the liquid component which we call blood plasma okay plasma is what is the liquid component of blood which makes up approximately 55% of the entire blood contents the remaining 45% or so is comprised of the blood corpuscles or the blood cells so talking about the liquid plasma um it is by itself it's a yellow pale yellow colored fluid made up of approximately 90% water and about 10% organic substances like proteins albumins globulins fibrinogens and also different inorganic mineral ions like calcium and various other mineral ions that's about the plasma and swimming around in the plasma there are the blood corpuscles which are mainly red blood cells white blood cells and platelets red blood cells or rbcs as the name indicates they are red in color okay and they are circular in shape their main function is to carry around the respiratory gases oxygen and carbon dioxide they mainly carry around a lot of oxygen carbon dioxide also to an extent but then how do they do this well rbcs contain the pigment which is called hemoglobin the chemical formula the short form of hemoglobin is hb remember that um, they contain hemoglobin which is what imparts the red color to our blood okay so uh, remember that hemoglobin when it is attached to oxygen that is what gives blood its royal red blood color otherwise when it's detached from oxygen by itself or when it's carrying around carbon dioxide or deoxygenated blood as such uh, appears less royal or res- less bright red it appears more of bluish red okay so um, now if you, to make it easier for you to remember children uh, do remember do imagine the red blood cells to be like a taxi like a car a car taxi the hemoglobin is the taxi driver the cab driver okay and it is carrying around different passengers which are mainly oxygen and carbon dioxide okay so that's about the red blood cells as far as white blood cells are concerned they are colorless or white in color and there are different types of our uh, of wbcs okay um the important thing to remember for all of them is that they act as your body's soldiers they act as your body's main defense mechanism wherein they have the ability to engulf pathogens engulf is because they have the ability to uh, phagocytos 
okay because they are amoeboid in shape wbcs are amoeboid in shape by phagocytosis they can eliminate pathogens from your body okay and some wbcs also have the ability to specialize and produce antibodies which are very very important in your immunity right so this is about white blood cells which are the soldiers the defense uh, cells of your body then coming to the blood platelets the main function of platelets is to help in blood clotting you fall down and within a few minutes the blood clots that's because of the action of your platelets so remember this is what together makes up the blood plasma and the blood corpuscles now where does the blood flow it flows through the blood vessels there are three major kinds of blood vessels in the human body which are artery which carries blood from the heart and while it carries blood from the heart obviously what would it carry it would carry oxygen and nutrients because that is what it wants to distribute across all the cells of the body right so from the heart arteries begin they branch out into arterioles okay and these arterioles branch out further into thin walled capillaries they are one cell in thickness that's it capillaries because they have the ability and as a result of this being thin walled in fact they have the ability to um, carry out simple diffusion in order to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide and nutrients also with cells and tissues of the body so capillaries are what directly supply to your tissues and also from the tissues and the cells of your body whatever waste products are there like carbon dioxide and any other excretory product which has to be removed from your cells gets picked up by the capillaries they combine together to form venules venules combine together to form vein and the veins empty all this back into your heart where does it go then let's revise that uh, in the next two minutes but remember this is how it occurs arteries capillaries and veins and as you can see the difference in the thickness also of arteries and veins right arteries are very very thick walled whereas veins are very thin walled another difference is that arteries are not provided with valves because when it is pumped from the heart to the different body parts it's already under very high pressure there is very little chance for blood to flow in the backward direction the reverse direction whereas in veins because it's traveling from the different parts to your heart blood may tend to be lazy and it may tend to flow back in the reverse direction so veins are provided with valves whereas arteries do not have them okay so this is about arteries and veins remember artery a in artery stands for away carries blood away from your heart okay now this is your heart we have four chambers in our heart the right atrium the left atrium the right ventricle and the left ventricle okay upper atria and the lower ventricles now um, think about all the blood vessels that we have spoken about what happens is when your blood uh, it constantly it has the ability to contract and relax right so in this process this is how it gets filled up with blood and it's also able to pump out this blood to different parts of your body right so these are the major chambers of your heart remember that the left side mainly deals with oxygenated blood the right side of your uh, of your heart mainly deals with deoxygenated blood okay so into the left atrium pulmonary veins bring in oxygenated blood from the lungs from the lungs it brings in oxygenated blood empties it into the left atrium when the atria contract this blood flows into the left ventricle then the ventricles contract from the left ventricle the oxygenated blood through the aorta which is the largest artery of the body pumps out this blood through its branches into the through the different arteries and arterioles to the different parts of your body this is how oxygenated blood is transported across your body now coming to the next part remember i told you what your veins do right here it i mentioned that it's bringing the deoxygenated blood to the heart where in the heart it is bringing it into the right atrium of the heart through the inferior vena cava from the lower parts of your body and the superior vena cava from the upper parts of your body basically the parts above your heart okay so into the right atrium all that garbage is dumped what does it do when the atria contract uh, this blood flows into the right ventricle when the ventricles contract this deoxygenated blood flows through the pulmonary artery 
into the lungs, the right and left lobes of the lungs, because the lungs have the ability to provide it with oxygen. And that oxygenated blood is transported back into your heart through your pulmonary veins. This is how blood circulation in your body occurs. Okay. Now, this is just for you to get an idea about the beating of the heart. Remember, lub and dub sounds are what are the sounds produced when the heart beats. Okay. Yes, it's exactly like this. It's basically a self-excitatory organ, your heart. All right. Now, this is a gist of how blood circulates um, about a basic flow chart representing the uh, pathway, the schematic flow of blood. Let us uh, start with the right atrium. Okay. Right atrium is in a relaxed state. Deoxygenated blood from all parts of the body through the vena cava get filled up in the right atrium. Okay. When the right atrium contracts, it flows into the right ventricle. So ventricles get filled up when they are in a relaxed position. Basically, any blood chamber, any heart chamber gets filled up when it's relaxed and it pumps out when it contracts. Okay. So right ventricle now relaxed uh, and fills up with uh, deoxygenated blood. Now the right ventricle contracts. Okay. And it pumps this blood into the lungs through the pulmonary arteries but always remember pulmonary arteries and veins are the only exceptions with regard to carrying oxygenated and deoxygenated blood respectively every artery of your body except pulmonary artery carries oxygenated blood and every vein of your body except the except the pulmonary vein carries deoxygenated blood okay so that's about but always remember the universal rule is all arteries the a stands for away all the time okay that's important to know always away from the heart all right so from the lungs oxygenated blood returns through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium which is here uh, and when that contracts it gets moved into the left ventricle which is here and when that contracts through the aorta, it pumps it out into all the body parts. And from there, deoxygenated blood comes back again through the vena cava into your right atrium. This is the pathway of blood circulation. We call this double circulation because the same blood flows twice through the heart. Okay. So now coming to circulation in plants. Enough of human beings discussion. In plants, there is a vascular system not like blood, but they have specialized vascular tissues, conducting tissues, which are xylem and phloem. Xylem especially has the ability to carry, ox, uh, carry water and the dissolved minerals from the soil to the upper parts of the plant body. Phloem can be, co co can be con uh, compared to the lunchbox service, right? Wherein from a prepared uh, food prepared in the kitchen, from there it transports that food to different destinations as and when required. Sort of a food delivery service, right? So phloem does that in xylem for water. So this is the movement or circulation through xylem and phloem. As you can see, um, transport of water occurs unidirectionally along the xylem. Uh, which is from the roots towards the upper parts of the plant body. Whereas as far as phloem is concerned, it is bidirectional because leaves from the leaves, which is the kitchen of the plant, food prepared has to be transported to the upper as well as the lower parts of the plant body. So bidirectional in phloem, unidirectional in xylem. Okay, so this is about xylem and phloem. And now an overview of circulation in plants and animals. Animals, as we have seen, have a well-developed circulatory system, especially in human beings. We have blood, blood vessels and the heart. As far as plants are concerned, water and food need to be transported. What about gaseous exchange? It's simple diffusion through the stomata. So that's all right. So water transport is taken care of by xylem. Food transport is taken care of by phloem. Now xylem what it does is um, from roots with the help of the roots it takes in water through the root hair cells through osmosis from the soil. Water is taken in from the soil through osmosis into root hair cells. From there they enter into the xylem and through the xylem it travels upward to the rest of the uh, plant body. Okay, it always travels in the upward direction. Okay, so transpirational pull and root pressure uh, are major forces which help in maintaining this capillarity of water 
maintaining it in the unidirection. Transpiration acts as a pulling force from the top. Root pressure is a sort of pressure which is developed in the root hair cells from where it gets pushed up in the upward direction into the xylem. Okay. So root pressure and transpirational pull major forces, cohesion force and capillary action are additional forces which help in maintaining this upward movement through the xylem. Okay, so that's about transportation and plants and animals and here is the entire session for you in a bite size. Remember, the circulatory system in both plants as well as animals helps in transport of various substances. As far as we are concerned, blood is a fluid connective tissue. It's got plasma and blood cells. The human body has three major kinds of blood vessels, veins, arteries and capillaries. Okay. As far as plants are concerned, xylem and phloem form the major plant vascular system or the conducting tissues in a plant. Okay. So children, in addition to these sessions, do remember... Vedantu Pro subscription is also uh, open and out there for you. So to know more about that, to know more about the details of Pro subscription courses, remember to visit the link in the description box below and check out the pinned comment in the comment section below and use the coupon code AMBPRO so that you can get the best benefits available on it. Now children, very importantly, before you sign off, before you leave, remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed this session and if you want more and more of these sessions because that's the best way of communicating, right? In a very, very short and crisp manner. And do remember to share it with all your friends regardless of what grade or board they may belong to because it's a bite-sized piece of content so everyone can benefit from it. And remember to stay subscribed to our channel Vedantu 9th and 10th English because we will be coming up with more and more such interesting pieces of content just to make your learning process a lot easier. And do remember to follow me on Instagram also at Ambika underscore Vedantu to know about a lot of new updates and a lot of interesting posts. Okay, children, so thanks a lot once again. Stay home, stay safe. Until we meet again, this is Ambika signing off. Bye-bye.